Hello beautiful people, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all uh, doing fantastic out there. In this video, we're gonna talk about how is it that you can hold your breath for so long when you do the Wim Hof Method? So Wim Hof has been a f figure in the breathwork industry for a while now. He has created a method that involves hyperventilation breathwork with uh, exposure to cold and ice and then keep it consistent. So there's a, almost an element of being accountable to it as well. However, what I'm going to be discussing in this video is essentially why is it that when we do these breath work sessions under the Wim Hof and then we go for these breath faults, why is it that we don't feel that urge to breathe for a longer period of time? And before we go there, we really need to just discuss a little bit about physiology and understand what's going on in our body to trigger our breathing. Many people might think that our desire to breathe or our stimulus to breathe comes from oxygen dropping. And that would make sense because, you know, we need oxygen to survive and if it drops to low levels, then it can kill us. However, that's not the truth. The truth is, in fact, yes, CO2 is that the primary stimulus to breathe. So when we break down uh, energy, we basically produce carbon dioxide. When we break down energy anaerobically, say for example in high intensity exercise, then we produce more CO2. And when that CO2 increases in the blood, our peripheral chemoreceptors, they basically pick up this high level of CO2 and they have to shift that so that our body doesn't alter its pH. The blood pH is very essential for all metabolic functioning. If it goes out of the line of uh, 7.35 to 7.45 for too long, basically our body starts to fail and our mind starts to fail. In the Wim Hof method, what we're actually doing is though, no, we're doing 30, 20, 30, 40 deep breaths. And as we do those breaths, what are we doing? We are expelling off a lot of CO2, but there's not a lot of movement going on. So we're not producing a lot of CO2. So therefore carbon dioxide drops in our bodies and it creates something called hypocapnia, which actually increases our pH in our body into an alcoholic state. So if CO2 is, is low within the blood, then what tends to then happen is these peripheral chemoreceptors, they don't need to detect anything until it's at a higher level. So it delays the time period at which we get that urge to breathe. So you're not essentially learning to hold your breath for longer. You're kind of just tricking your body into believing that it doesn't need to breathe because CO2 levels are very low. However, this can be falsely dangerous because oxygen is still being used at this point. There isn't a, a way for the body to detect oxygen until it's critically low. And for some people, that might be too late. And this is why it's important to not do the, the Wim Hof breathing or hyperventilation breath work when you're spe specifically in the water or potentially uh, driving or you know doing something that could cause you if, you, if you passed out, you would die. And this is very, very kind of uh, important in things like free diving. And you don't wanna take this kind of practice into free diving because you think that you can hold your breath for longer you're gonna go deeper and all of a sudden black out and you're under the water. How can people help that? So really it's not about your ability to actually improve your breath hold. It's actually how much CO2 you can drop and it's changes in the sensitivities of CO2 that cause you to be able to hold your breath for longer. So I hope you enjoyed the episode. Just a quick fast one, just to give you an understanding of what's happening in your body when you do the Wim Hof method and why you can hold your breath for longer and stay relaxed without feeling the urge to breathe. If you like this episode or have any comments, just leave a question below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll catch you again soon.